Next Era Energy Resources is a leader in wind energy and we're also in the forefront of wind energy research. In March 2008, we entered into a partnership with Texas Christian University and Oxford University. There are three main areas of focus for the partnership. The first area, ecological impacts, is one of our most critical areas and where we spend most of our time. Scientists gather and analyze data about birds and bats and how they interact with our wind farms. This research helps us build and operate wind farms that are capable of coexisting with birds and bats. The second area of focus is social and economic impacts. Through the work in this area, we look to answer questions such as, how do the communities in which we build benefit economically from our wind farms, and how do they perceive our wind farms? The last area of focus is climate and carbon. Research here helps us gain a better understanding of how to integrate renewables and create a vibrant, clean energy system. As a leader in our industry, we are committed to building the best wind farms, and the research being done through this partnership will help us to continue to meet this goal. When, when I got involved in this research, I, I didn't have any preconceived notions as to whether wind energy would be good or bad for the environment, for birds or bats, or for local communities, because I didn't have much experience in that. Three and a half years into this project, uh, the data has really told us uh, a story that wind energy is very beneficial to local communities and can not just coexist with our ecology and bird and bat populations, but that they can thrive. Very interestingly, the support for wind in these communities has been overwhelmingly strong. Uh, I think something in the region of 70 to 75 percent of the people that we have surveyed in a number of counties uh, not only want more wind in the United States and in, the, in their particular states, but also literally in their backyard. I think the most critical thing about this partnership uh, and in fact any corporate funding is that the research be truly independent, that the science be you know, squeaky clean, because if we're not producing science that is, is truly clean and independent, uh, then there's no point in doing this. So we want to make sure uh, that if any questions are asked, and indeed they are asked and should be asked about the independence of the research, that we can make sure that that research is truly peer-reviewed and independent. How does the money really flow when you build a wind farm, especially when you put a wind farm out in a rural community such as this? Who benefits? There's a huge number of jobs that are created during the construction phase uh, of these wind farms, but perhaps even more importantly is the ongoing job creation and the stimulus that is created in these local communities during the long-term operation of the farms. So the economic impact is, is enormous to these local communities. TCU researchers have spent long hours in the field studying the wildlife that lives around the Wolf Ridge facility, in particular in North Texas, from really sunup to sundown, uh, documenting what these birds are doing, how they're behaving, interacting with each other, and interacting with our wind facility. What we've seen so far is that, at least in terms of shrub nesting birds, there doesn't seem to be any negative effect in, in terms of how close they nest to our wind facilities. This is good, it really underscores the ability of this green energy source to coexist with the natural environment. One of the questions related to uh, bat fatality at wind farms is really, what's the bat activity like? How are bats using the wind resource area? Are they foraging near the wind turbines? Are they just commuting through from point A to point B? And so we're going to be using mist netting, and that's putting up these uh, really fine scale nets in areas where bats are going to be foraging at night or likely commuting routes and capture those bats. And this will allow us to identify what species are present in the area. So if we can figure out what are they doing within the wind resource areas, which areas actually have high bat activity, that will allow us to better minimize bat fatality in places where there are turbines and perhaps better site future wind farms to avoid this conflict in the first place. They're really taking, uh, I think, a very forward-thinking approach. So not just quantify it and move on, but figure what creative solutions can we bring to the table to have bats and wind turbines coexist. 
Initially, I think there was a lot of skepticism about it. So you've got a partnership between this big company and these researchers at an institution, and how is it going to work? And I think it works remarkably well. It's really is a team effort and a collaboration between the two, but at the end of the day, what research questions are asked, the data that we gather, all of that, um, we as the scientists are really free to publish, to draw our own conclusions, and then they're going to be tested through that peer-reviewed process. They're going to be judged by other scientists as to whether or not we've done a good job. And so I think that really is unique.